Welcome to the Business Brains and the Bottom Line Podcast. My name is Paul Delivery, your host, and my guest today is Chris Malazuski. Did I say that right, Chris? You did. You did. You got it. All right. You got a long name, so I, I want to make sure I'm always... Every vowel and consonant in the alphabet. <laughs> there you go. I want, just want to make sure I'm very, very cautious of that, you know, pronouncing people's names, you know. But, uh, well, welcome to the show, Chris. Uh, great to have you. You are the founder, or one of the founders of the Walking Tall Movement, and... Uh, Got a great story. I'll kind of tee it up for you and, and uh, you know, you can t- explain a little bit more about what you do. But um, you and the other co-founder, uh, Todd Blylevin, the son of Bert Blylevin, by the way, uh, have both been in kind of uh, events over the last couple of few years that have uh, kind of shaped your lives. Tell me, tell me a little bit about what, you know, what the genesis of this Walking Tall movement was. Yeah, sure, Paul. Well, first off, thanks for having me. I'm uh, excited to get to speak with you today, and it's an honor to be here. Um, but as you mentioned, yes, uh, both Todd Blylevin and I, unfortunately, uh, are survivors of uh, mass shootings. And um, without saying too much of Todd's story, uh, he was a part of the worst uh, mass shooting on record in the United States. On October 1st, 2017, he was at the Route 91 Harvest Country Music Festival in Las Vegas, um, when a killer opened fire and sadly took 58 lives uh, wow. that day. And he, uh, Todd, did some uh, extremely heroic tasks that uh, evening, saved countless amounts of lives and um, put himself in harm's way. And um, sadly, uh, I was in a similar experience uh, on July 4th, 2022. Um, I was the co-chair of the Highland Park, Illinois Independence Day Parade. Uh, when a killer opened fire on that parade, uh, sadly taking seven lives uh, and physically wounding uh, nearly 50 more. And then, as I always say, mentally harming countless amounts of people, including myself. And um, three days after my experience, I got a text message from Todd Blylevin, uh, did not know who he was. Okay, that was Uh, actually one of my questions. How did you guys connect? Yeah, so because you mentioned uh, baseball and his dad being in the Hall of Fame, I also have an extensive background in the game of baseball uh, prior to working in Parks and Rec as I do now. I coach collegiate uh, baseball at the Division I level for about 10 years, Okay. Um, Valparaiso University and then the University of Iowa, which was my alma mater. And uh, unbeknownst to me, Todd and I had a mutual friend. And uh, our mutual friend had known of Todd's experience uh, in 2017. And on the 4th of July was texting me that day, uh, checking on my safety. And uh, I didn't know it, but he then reached out to Todd and asked Todd to reach out to me wow. uh, just to exper- just to let me know that Todd was there for me, what he experienced, how he handled his situation, and what he was doing to make himself mentally well. And um, so July 7th, 2022, Todd introduced himself to me, and uh, we've been best friends and brothers ever since. And, um, you know, here we are with the Walking Tall Movement now. Yeah, cool. So... Obviously, I, I you know I went to your website. I read a little bit about what you do. So the genesis, obviously, was those two events, right? And and common ground between you and Todd. What's the purpose of the Walking Tall? Like, what wh- where do you see this thing going, and what what's your goals? Yeah, no, great question. You know, anytime I think anyone uh, intends to start a worldwide movement, <laughs> yeah. you have lofty goals, right? And I think um, the precipice of it for me is. We want to create the world's largest support group, okay? And um, through my experience, through Todd's experience, uh, and many other guests we've had on our show, we've come to find that peer support in in various forms or fashions is extremely, extremely helpful and beneficial. And so through the Walking Tall movement, we are making ourselves extremely vulnerable, uh, telling our stories, sharing our uh, circumstances, our feelings, our uh, therapeutic uh, journey, if you will. And we're hoping by doing so, um, others can uh, gain strength through our experiences because uh, we don't want anybody to have to go through a mass shooting or any sort of trauma in that instance. And so um, what we're doing is bringing guests on with all types of experiences to share their story, to let others know they themselves are not alone. And so we're instilling um, hope and love and kindness into the world. And um, we want folks to know they're not alone and that, uh, you know, being vulnerable 
is really one of the largest solutions to some of these mental health crises we're experiencing in the United States. Yeah. You, you touch on a good point, Chris. I mean, I think we were raised that as men, you know, you got to be tough. You can't show emotion and all that. But I think that's changing. Or at least I hope it is. Yeah, it's definitely needed um, to change. I think you know exactly right. And Todd talks about it quite often, you know, being raised uh, by his family the way he was. There was always the no blood, no foul, uh, right. you know, w- wipe it off and get back in there type of mentality. And not that that's not beneficial at times. I think sure. there's a place for it. Um, but I think as um, mental health becomes prominent and a focus in the world as it should be, I think we're learning different ways um, to lift people up. And just being tough and, and gr- you know, gritting through it is sometimes not the most helpful. And we're learning that through our own journeys. And, um, you know, we're hoping we can inspire folks uh, also to make themselves vulnerable and do the same and um, share their stories because we always say in as cliche as it sounds is, you know, your story could be somebody else's survival guide. And uh, that's really our motive. Yeah. And, it, I, I, you know, the more I think about it here is, you know, when, when people have common ground, right? If people that are experienced, it doesn't have to be a mass shooting, right? There's not many people that go through one of those, but there's all sorts of tragedies in life that people have to go through and doing it alone can't be the right way to do it. Yeah, no, exactly. And I think, you know, to your earlier point of, um, you know, men particularly, but all humans in general, not really uh, being comfortable, uh, being as vulnerable as maybe they should be. I think that's why we're seeing such high incident rates of suicide. Yeah. And we start to see things um, from a mental health perspective that are really concerning in the world. And um, we believe that by sharing your story, helping others through theirs, Um, we can maybe work towards lessening some of those rates that are really, really damaging society today. And, um, you know, it's inspiring to see that, you know, in fact, we are helping people um, through what we're doing, but we still have such a long way to go. And, um, you know, we have a lot more stories to share and a lot more people to meet. I think in one of our previous conversations, you had said something like, if you can help one person, it'll be worth it. Yeah, that's our goal, you know, is... Um, while we do have this uh, lofty goal of, of a worldwide movement, right, we recognize that it's one person at a time. And listen, uh, you know, this isn't uh, at this point a business for us. This is a sure. passion. And so, um, you know, our goal and motive was always to help just one person. And if we stopped at any point, we know if we did that, we would be a success and we right. can hold our heads high. And so uh, one person at a time and uh, one story at a time. And, uh, you know, at this point, like I said, we've have some proof that it is working and we believe we've helped more than one person at this time and uh, we're not stopping yet. Yeah, nice. You know, I you touched on something about suicide. That's I don't know if it just where the media is making us more aware of it, but statistics will bear it out. I think that there are more suicides across all sectors, right? Age groups, races. Yeah, the the rates are alarmingly increasing, and um, you know, to your earlier point, uh, the highest incident of suicide is is middle aged white men like you, yourself and me, and um, you know, I think that speaks think to I'm- the. Early- I think I may be past the middle age. Oh. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to tell. You look so young, Paul. Yeah, but, oh, gee, thanks. Um, I... but, but nevertheless, you know, I, I think to your earlier point, it speaks to how, you know, folks like you or I were raised of, you know, holding your emotions in, swallowing them, not expressing right. your fears, not uh, telling people your emotions. And so that's why I think we start to see these high incident rates of certain demographics. But uh, we can't dismiss COVID and, and the trauma that that pr- placed on many people. And obviously the higher rates of violence and mass violence in, in our country is uh, alarming as well. And I think that's leading to some of these more unfortunate outcomes of suicide. But uh, we hope through Walking Tall, we can diminish some of those uh, outcomes and uh, be a resource to many. Yeah. Well, you know, obviously you you and Todd have survived, you know, two mass shootings. and uh, But it seems like every week there's a new one. Am I, you know, I don't you know, track well, it completely, but it seems you know, like every week on the news. Yeah, no, it's good insight. You know, the thing that I personally am confused over as it relates to mass shootings is what is defined as one now. Yeah. And I think if you think back to Columbine or Sandy Hook or some of the initial really jarring events in our country, um, you know, those were evident that they were mass shootings. Uh, What Todd went through, what I went through, that was clearly a mass shooting. But today, 
Um, you know, many other uh, definitions of mass shootings are, you know, certain types of violence that maybe not in the same vein as what I experienced. Sure. Um, like you, you, so, hear a lot, you hear a lot of, you know, a person walks into a house and th there's a relationship there and they end up killing themselves and three people in the house. Correct. Like that, that's I would targeted. Say that Right. Yeah. That's that's tar not a mass shooting, just a random shooting. It's some something that there's a personal connection there. Yeah, and it's and again, it's it's confusing. You know, definitions are changing almost by the day, and I can't keep up with them. I can barely keep up with myself half the time. So, um, but you're right. You know, what I will say is, violent crimes in general uh, are are on the uptick um, in any form or fashion, and and we as a society have to be better. And um, whether it's a mass shooting or a, a carjacking or whatever the case may sure. be, that's a traumatic experience and people have to be able to have a resource to work through them. You know, I don't know if we have enough time on this show to go over what the remedies are for this, but there's, there's so many different parameters here that are coming into play. I think the biggest one is mental health. I think all these mass shooters have mental health issues. Am I, am I missing the boat on this one or is that, is that yeah, a pretty I would common agree. threat? No, no, no. I, I think um, to commit any act uh, of heinous crime in that sense, you have to have some sort of mental health concern, right? right? But what I will also say is to execute something like that, you have to have high intelligence. Yes. And and so, um, you know, mental health is certainly a component to it, as are many other factors. And what I'll say about Walking Tall, uh, you know, and I think that we've wisely moved towards is staying down the middle. Right. Obviously, Todd and I have personal feelings about gun sure. control. We have personal feelings about mental health. We have personal feelings about everything for that matter. But as it relates to walking tall and how we're trying to work to better the world, we're keeping it down the middle. We're staying focused yep. on helping people. We're staying focused on bettering the mental health and being vulnerable. We don't get into conversations of politics or gun control or things like that um, for good reason. But yeah. that's not to say that we don't have our own opinions and thoughts. Sure. sure. No, that that's pretty smart, actually, because... Again, your goal is to help people, not not to change the world from a political standpoint. It's to, you know, make yeah. people's lives better. You know, it's interesting in in as you see in the media, there are various mass shooting survivors like Todd or I, uh, very prominent uh in society, doing great work um in their own lane, right? But what we found is many of these lanes are gun focused or they're political affiliation focused, things yeah. of that sort. For us, it doesn't matter if you're a Republican or Democrat, if you carry a gun or you don't, whatever the, the interest is, mental health uh, impacts all of us. And so we want to be a resource for everybody, regardless of, of your personal feelings of, of various things. Yeah. So, you know, I think what would be like a first step? Someone's feeling despondent, depressed. What do you recommend they do? I mean, what, what would be the first step? Because that's a big one. I think... Taking the first step is going to be ninety percent of the battle, I think. Right to ask. Well, it's help. like it's like that with any with any uh, you know personal issue or hurdle you experience, right? I think it's uh, recognition and acknowledgement. You know, I will say um, for about ten or eleven months after my experience, I just put my head down and I just grinned and bared it, and I went to work every day, and and I you know at, at times I may have done more damage to myself by not really acknowledging uh yeah. where I was at right and having PTSD as I do and and having depression in various uh instances as I do I have to be cognizant and aware of it so my first suggestion would be um you know self realization self actualization really level with yourself um and 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 be clear and I always say like I do a gut uh, a a personal check every day I check my head my heart and my gut you know, how's my brain feeling? How's my heart feeling? How's my gut feeling? And that really is going to tell me how I'm going to carry out my day. Um, but yeah. if you can't be honest with yourself about what's really going on internally, mentally, physically, whatever, um, you're really not going to be able to get the help you deserve and need. And so I really encourage folks to be honest with themselves and then from there share their experiences or talk to professionals to get the help they need. Yeah. So you just, you just mentioned something. You teed it up for my next question. You, you, you and Todd are not mental health professionals, like certified psychologists, sociologists, any of that stuff, correct? Yeah, no, the, the beauty of walking tall um, is well exactly right, Paul. Todd and I are mental health experts by experience, sure. I think is the way yeah. to explain it. Yep. But the beauty, the beauty of our team is we do, in fact, have a credentialed doctor of psychology uh, on our show every week. 
Um, she's a large part of our movement. She uh, is integral in making sure that Todd and I don't misspeak or sure. uh, say anything erroneous medically. Or yeah, uh, that, that's where I was going with that. Is and I did I did not know that you had that you know that that person on on your show. That's uh, that's excellent because that she makes it. I wouldn't say more legit. That's probably not the right word, but you know what it is. She she makes sure. No, she you- she definitely provides a source of. Uh, education and she provides a source of acknowledging exactly what's going on medically, right? Todd or I can't do that. I could just tell you I had a panic attack and what I felt, but Dr. LaRosa can tell you exactly what happened, why it happened, how to maybe prevent it, how to work through it, all these things. And so having her as a a doctor of psychology, she's a licensed BCBA. She's at the top of her field. She started clinics in New York that she's now sold. Um, She's an expert when it comes to mental health, um, you know, not only education and medically and whatnot, but also personally, like all of us are. So having her has been just, um, you know, the cornerstone to really making sure that we're believable. Yeah. So where do you see this going as far as, you know, the global movement? I mean, how, how, how long do you think it'll take to get there? Well, that's a great question. Um, you know, as it relates to global acknowledgement, you know, believe it or not, we've already gained um, some recognition globally. Um, I've already been invited on a, a podcast and have spoken with a gentleman from London. Uh, well, actually, uh, from Austria. And uh, he has his own mental health charity called The Chance for Happiness. Um, it's a suicide prevention outfit. And uh, they start, they have a mental health conference every year. And um, this coming October, uh, I was invited to be a guest speaker in London um, to speak nice. of my experience. And um, I've been, uh, as has Todd and Dr. LaRosa, we've guested on many podcasts and shows like yours throughout the world, um, Ireland, South nice. Africa, yeah. uh, Anchorage, Alaska, you know, the list goes on and on. And so social media has really been imperative in helping us spread who we yeah. are and what, what our intent is. Um, but furthermore, we have greater initiatives than just a podcast. Our podcast was right. kind of our... Uh, saying hello to the world, letting people know who we are and we're here for them. But uh, we have uh, many other initiatives. Uh, Keynote speaking is one. We're building a piece of technology that we believe will help folks like yourself and me find therapy and uh, and therapists uh, better, faster, quicker, all those things. Um, We have uh, so many other initiatives. Uh, We we're selling merchandise to carry our movement forward. You know, I got my walking tall shirt on now. And our goal with that is, is if you put your walking tall hat or shirt, you're going to carry yourself a little bit better that day and you're going to help others and you're going to nice. have a sense of pride. And so we have many and many initiatives. I don't want to let them uh, all, I don't want to let the cat out of the bag too much, but uh, we're not stopping at a podcast and um, we're going to keep moving forward as best we can. Yeah. And thank God for technology today. You touched on social media and doing things like this. I mean, I've had guests from Australia. I've had guests from the UK on. I mean, 20 years ago, you couldn't do that. Yeah. Right no, it's been part. amazing. The The power of social media, you know, I've always been aware of it. Um, but since we started Walking Tall, I've become very, very active on LinkedIn. And um, that's how we met. And yeah, I've gotten exactly to meet a lot right. of your colleagues. And I just decided one day to just take a leap of faith and not have a fear of failure and just be vulnerable on LinkedIn and share our story and promote walking tall. And lo and behold, we have a whole, uh, you know, just contingency of great folks like yourself and some of your other colleagues that I've worked with behind us, pushing our movement forward. And it's just been so, so inspiring. And yeah. you're exactly right. If not for, for internet or social media technology, who knows where we'd be. Yeah. And, and you, you touch on a good point. I've said this, you know, I've been doing this for about three years now and I've met, some of the most wonderful people through the podcast industry either have just, I've reached out to just random people that I like their stories, kind of like yourself, just reach out. And now we become friends. I've got friends all over the country, Europe. I mean, it's been, it's been, it's been a great experience for me. Yeah. It's been for me as well. You know, and I think, um, through sharing my story and through Todd sharing his and Dr. LaRosa sharing hers, um, you know, people gravitate towards us. And what I think you'll, you'll understand is, and what's been one of the more miraculous outcomes of walking tall is when we're just having organic conversations with people and we naturally explain to them what walking tall is or how it came to be. And we tell folks, Hey, you know, I was in a mass shooting and this is my experience. Now the responses you get in the stories you hear from people uh, of their own trauma that you never knew existed, or they would never tell you otherwise are miraculous. And you can almost feel people becoming lighter 
sure. when they when they tell you their experience or their story, uh, and they only do so because I make myself vulnerable right. first with Todd, and and so that's really what we're trying to instill in people is being vulnerable, sharing your story is not only helpful uh, to others but yourself as well. Yeah, and it I think just talking about it and, and realizing that you're not alone is is a big plus. No, it's an, it's imperative. You know that there's back to the suicide rates. There's too many people who feel like they're alone, and that's their only option. And you know, as it relates to suicide, I won't hide from it. I, I understand it is an option, right? Yeah. It, it's it's always an option. It's just that I don't believe it's the option. It's not the option for me. It's certainly not the option for Todd. Yes. And we don't want to be the option for anybody else. Yeah. No, suicide's a big one. I always wonder, you know, what is going through someone's mind at that moment. How yeah. despondent and how desperate they must feel to. I just had a friend of mine d- down here in Texas just, uh, you know, killed himself probably about a month, month and a half ago. You know, yeah. mid, late fifties guy and just going through a divorce. Things weren't pretty in his life and just, just I won't yeah. get into all the details. Kind of sad though. You know, no, just, it's not uh, kind of sad. It's extremely sad. Yeah. And, you know that. That uh, friend of yours, you know, think of if he were to just pick up the phone and have called you and just said, right. hey, Paul, I'm struggling. And I, I know you well enough. You would have talked to him all night if you had to. And yep. um, he just wasn't willing to take that leap of faith, it seemed. And that's unfortunate. And and that's what we're really trying to inspire folks to do. If you feel despondent, if you have despair in your life, if you've experienced something traumatic, whatever the case may be, just know if you don't feel like you have that uh, personal resource, that person you could reach out to directly, uh, that we're here for them and uh, for anybody else for that matter. Absolutely. And before we end, we'll we'll give everyone all the you know websites and all that. But I do have a question for you about the about the the incident. If you don't mind me asking no, a few questions about it. it, sure. So what what where were you when this whole thing happened? Give it. I'd like to know some details about your personal experience of what you heard first, saw first, and yeah. How, so how uh, I, as I said earlier, I was the co-chair of the parade. So. Uh, leading up for months to the event and to the day, I helped organize the entire event. Uh, you know, secured all the floats, organized the parade route. You know, all, all these things. Um, and I got on site that morning about six a.m. to organize the day, and uh, I was the first one on site. Uh, it was a normal morning. Uh, I've been the co-chair of that parade for about six years. You know, it was it was actually the first Fourth of July parade since COVID in two years. So everybody okay. was excited. Everybody yeah. was happy. You know, you could imagine. And uh, the parade started at 10 o'clock. I was about, uh, I was at the launching point where I kind of send all the floats into the parade and uh, keep everybody organized. And so 14 minutes later after the parade started, um, I heard a a rat-a-tat-tat. And uh, I was about a half a block away. And uh, I put my head down and I, I, I remember like thinking, okay, well, what asshole shoots fireworks at a parade? Right. And then I thought, well, the color guard would be right about where the shots were. And I thought maybe yeah. they were shooting blanks. And then I remembered, well, no, they never do that. And then I heard it again. And uh, I looked up and uh, I was about 10 feet from a coworker uh, who were helping me manage the parade. And uh, they became very panicked and asked, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? And I said, stay calm. And uh, we started pushing everybody south. And so I had 35 staff members working to send, uh, you know, thousands of people in, in the direction of South away from where the shots were heard. But that doesn't mean we didn't know that there couldn't be more shooters uh, right. in the area, yeah. right? And so you're just sending people to the safest location, but you have no idea who's a killer, who has a gun, what the, you know. And so yeah. um, for about a half hour after I heard the shots, I just ran around um, where I was located and people were pleading with me to help find their children, find safety. Uh, how to be chaos. Um, it was pure chaos. Yeah. And um, so then from there, I went on um, for about eight hours. Um, I just worked uh, to complete some tasks I never thought I would have to complete. I worked with law enforcement to um, rescue 13 staff members who were sheltering in strangers place, uh, strangers homes that day. Uh, we vacated a beach with about 80 people still barbecuing and drinking their 4th of July beer. Uh, all while the killer was still on the loose. And so right. um, for approximately eight hours, seven hours, um, the suspect was not caught. Um, and so as all of this activity was going on in town, we did not know where the person was, essentially who the person was. 
And um, did they know, have a description? Did someone? Yeah, have a there was a there was a fairly quick description. Um, as I was in, I was in the command location, central location with um, EMS, fire, police, etc. Yep. We had a TV on, and we started seeing the the press conferences. Uh, I was like ten feet from the press conferences, and then they started to identify the suspect and put out searches and things of that sort. But it wasn't probably for like an hour or two before they really gathered who they thought it was. Yeah, because there's a lot going on, right? This stuff happened so quick, and uh, so. When did they end up catching him? Um, it was approximately 6 p.m. that night. So uh, I finally left Highland Park and came home at about 5.15 that night. And um, I showered and I, you know, uh, you know, had a panic attack and things of that sort. And then um, I think it was at about like 6.15 or 6.30, I was told they finally caught him. Uh, and I guess what I've, what I've heard is that... Uh, the suspect intended to, after they were done doing what they did, uh, what, what he did in Highland Park, he was intending to drive to Madison, Wisconsin to do the same thing. Um, the timing of it was such that he could have completed it. Um, but I guess for whatever reason, he ultimately uh, got scared and turned back around to come home to the, the community. And luckily he was caught then. Yeah. Yeah. So what's a stat? What's his status right now? Um, in trial. And, uh, you know, I think this will be a long uh, legal battle. Um, not not only is the suspect um, being uh, charged, but also his father, um, because apparently his father uh, signed his gun control card or his carry cards and things of that sort. I'm I'm not familiar with what's needed to carry guns, but um, and I get updates. I get invited every time there's a court case. I could go into the court if I wanted. I get a Zoom link to watch it remotely if I prefer. Sure. And I and I just haven't done so yet. Um, you know, maybe someday I'll I'll uh, walk into that courtroom and and uh, lay eyes on him, but I haven't had the the strength enough yet to do so. Yeah, you know, when 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 you're ready, you'll be ready. Yeah, and I and if I'm not, that's okay too. You know, yeah. and and I think uh, you know what I say is like, you know, I think at times I'd love to go and just see the 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 circumstance of the court and all these things, but it's like. Man, this guy's impacted my life enough. Do I really want to take more time out of my day to just sit there and and yeah. you know see? And that's not worth it. I'd rather yeah. do something happy. When when do they think this will be? Does the trial be coming to closure? Oh gosh, I it's you know it's still in litigation and there's you know motions to postpone and all these different types of things. I mean, you know, as far as I'm concerned and what I understand of other circumstances of similar nature, this can go on for years, you yeah. know, and that, in it, and that what I'll say that in itself is damaging, right? Yes. Even I when I get these emails from the County to attend these court cases, or if I happen to see his face on the news, cause he made a court appearance, you know, it just boom, triggers you right back and you have to work yep. to, to ground yourself and, and understand that, Hey, this is just reality and you got to move on. But uh, it doesn't go away, and certainly it's not going away anytime soon. Yeah, but you are the classic example who of someone, in my opinion, who took a something terrible and is making something good come out of it. Well, thank you. With yeah. the walking tall movement, I mean, you could have again, you could have gone the other direction, right? You could have done nothing and just felt sorry for yourself, felt sorry for your community, but you you didn't. I, I commend you for that. You, you've picked yourself up and you're making something good happen and, and your life is better because of it. What well, you've done. well, first off, thank, thank you for the acknowledgement. And, um, what I've also said many times, a dirty little secret about walking tall and, and I'm not afraid to say it because I think it can help others as well is that, um, you know, as much as we intend to help others. And as we spoke about earlier, just helping one person, it is, you know, walking tall is so therapeutic for myself, for yeah. Todd, and even for Dr. LaRosa, you yeah, know, I believe and, it. and so as selfish as that may sound, you know, we're doing what we do um, first and foremost to help others, but also to save ourselves in a sense. And yeah. um, because as you can imagine, you know, these emotions, these feelings, these thoughts can become overwhelming. And if you don't have a platform to express them, to let them loose, to talk about them with somebody like yourself who knows what could happen. And I believe yeah. that that's why the suicide rates, again, not to harp on it, are what they are because people don't make themselves vulnerable. They don't have platforms to share their stories or even hear others to know that they're not alone. And, um, and you know, with that, uh, you know, we feel like if we're not doing walking tall or what we're doing, who knows where we would be as well. And, yeah. um, and so we're trying to uplift others. And, um, you know, you recognize and that means the world, Paul. So thanks. Yeah, that's great. Well, where the rubber meets the road, Chris, is uh, if someone 
sees this, needs some help, where do they go? Yeah, sure. So we have um, a lot of uh, opportunities to get a hold of us. So first and foremost, I would suggest uh, and ask anybody to go to our website. It's www.walkingtallmovement.com. There you'll find a wealth of resources. Uh, we have uh, a plethora of mental health hotlines and sure. uh, tips and tricks on our site. Uh, there you can also find all 20 or so of our, our episodes we've released so far. Um, you could find merchandise uh, to help support our movement and carry us forward. Um, but besides from our website, we also have all the social platforms. You could find sure. us on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, etc. And then uh, our email addresses are very simple. If you want to get a hold of me directly, it's just Chris at walkingtallpodcast.com, Todd, Vanetta, et cetera. Uh, we also have an info at walkingtallpodcast.com. So if you want to uh, potentially be a guest or share some information, or if you have a resource you'd like to put on our website, please let us know. And we're happy to share as much as we can. Yeah, that's great. I appreciate that info, Chris. And just, you know, for the for the people out there, just the only thing I would say is you're not alone, right? If you, if you need help, this several areas you can go and and to find help and and you know enrich your life right that's what it's all about chris and the bottom line is you know we're on earth for a long time some may think it's not long enough but you, know, you got to wake up every day and be happy I, I know that much it's so funny you say that i uh in my coaching days uh one of my mentors he would always say i'm not here for a long time i'm here for a good time and, yeah. uh, you know, I think that really rings true. And when you experience something like Todd or I experienced, it's becomes harder to have a good time. Uh, yeah. and I'll face and I'll just say it, frankly, it's harder. Um, but we also recognize that if we're going to be here, we might as well have a good time and, yeah, and, that's and, right. work towards, and we're going to work towards promoting good and spreading joy in the world and carrying our mission forward. And, uh, that's all we can do at this point. And, yeah. and we're having a lot of fun doing it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Chris, we'll, we'll kind of end on that note. We gave all your information out um, so people can get in contact with you. And, you know, I'll be following your movement, that's for sure, and I'll help any way I can. Uh, I think it's commendable what you guys are doing, and I know it's kind of a, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a passion for you guys. And it, it comes through. I can see it just in your face, and you hear it in your voice. So, Well, thank, thank you. Um, it really is a passion, and uh, it's one that's just continuously growing. It's growing yeah. with like your support, it's folks like uh, everybody else and that we've met through our movement or we've known in our lives previously and the support has been tremendous and uh, we just can't thank you for enough. Uh, thank you enough for supporting us and allowing me on your platform to, to share our message and let people know who we are. Yeah, awesome. Well, it was my pleasure having you, Chris. And uh, right, Paul, I got one more thing. What, what's going on? Anytime we end our show, uh, we always have our guests say two words before uh, we end and it's walk tall so i think maybe if you don't mind can we end your show this week with a walk tall absolutely all right, all right. well go ahead paul you got to lead us though you got to tell everybody tell right. your listeners to walk, however you sign off do whatever you got to do but then let's uh, tell your listeners to walk tall if you don't mind all right well the normally the way i sign off is just say hey that's a wrap for another edition of uh, business brains in the bottom line and remember walk tall walk tall everybody thank you paul you're welcome thank you